Okay, so I got a 2015 Honda Grom engine undergone what is suspected as oil starvation. I'm hoping that that's just limited to the cylinder and piston, but we'll see. Um, done some pretty basic teardown on this, and I'm going to just see how much the damage is in this. And I'm going to try to share the rebuild on this because I want to do something big with this engine. So it's going to get tore down all the way. Okay, here's the reveal of the damage. There's the exhaust side, which I didn't expect. It's got a little bit of hunyang on there. But we look here on the intake side, and we see substantial scoring. A lot of nasty, a lot of oil on the inside of the head. And then, here we go, wait for it. We've got a little bit of something on here, but the intake side over here we have have that and that makes sense because the intake is on top for the most part and it got starved of oil first but the big reveal here is that our wrist pin bearing is free and our rod bearing is is free on the crank we don't have a lot of play or anything so we're in good shape so the other engine which is installed in the bike we should be able to do a simple top end on it very good news. Okay, so I'm back here with the stock damaged, I think, cylinder. And I was just curious, since this is just a regular steel sleeve, I've got my hone here, and I think I'm going to try to clean it up and see if I can be minimum enough about it and restore this surface and get some of this aluminum off of here. Okay, so it looks kind of rough right now because I just got done honing it. So I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm using my phone here. I don't have a tripod or anything. So I might end up doing some more. But I'm going to get it to where I think this surface is cleaned up and I'll check back with you. Okay, so it's cleaning up some, but I'm still seeing some of these scoring marks. So I'm going to go a little bit further. This may be a lost cause, but I'm going to try it anyway. It's improved, but I still have a ways to go. I'm starting to make some progress, but you can still see some scoring at the top of the... Okay, I'm over here at the sink. I'm washing it off. I took the cylinder to the point in which I think it would be good removing the scoring. And I'm just going to wash this off. I'm going to get my telescoping gauges and see what the limits are in the Grom manual that I have. And we'll see if we've exceeded those or not. Wish me luck. After consulting my manual, after washing it and adding a little bit of oil to the cylinder, it's looking pretty good. And after using my telescoping gauges, and yes, some of the real mechanics out there, because I'm not a real mechanic, would probably have a little bit more specific equipment. We're within range on that. I'm going to get a piston, and I'm going to send it. Okay, I'm working on the little Grom engine here, and I got some parts in the mail. I've got my piston and rings I'm looking at here, uh, checking for clearance, and my freshly honed cylinder. Turns out what I'm going to do here is place this back on the donor engine that's in the bike and get it going with a functioning oil pump, of course. We're going to put a stunt oil pump on there that has a little siphon straw that pulls from the back of the engine, unlike that which uh, the super oil pump has. But anyway, made sure and checked my manual here to make sure that my values were correct. And again, I'm about to do the oil side rail um, to check the ring gap on it to make sure it's within spec, but things are looking up. In addition to the parts in which I got for the Grom, I got a new wrist pin, 
obviously a head gasket and a base gasket. And here also are the uh, wrist pin clips. Uh, I opted, obviously, not to get another cylinder, but you can do that for relatively cheap. I just choose to do things the hard way sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with this cylinder. It's completely within spec, so it's going to be a ripper. I also cleaned up the head, which I have out in the garage. I'm binging on some Netflix right now in my living room. Okay, I got the little Grom here. And this is the bike that had the engine in it that I've been working on, or disassembling, and I refurbished the top end on it. So you can see that I've already disassembled the exhaust and removed it, unbolted the intake. And I'm just going to pull this top end off and inspect it and see if we had the same sort of failure. And if we do, I'll be able to put that top end on it that I've been working on and then we'll be able to pull this clutch cover over here. This is also the Kitako uh, fancy one that does the oil spinner delete so that you have a oil filter that you can replace. Anyway, wish me luck. Okay, I made sure and moved the engine to TDC and I went ahead and removed the little cam wheel cog here after loosening the tensioner over here. I didn't remove it all the way out. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to remove these two and then these head bolts and I'm going to do the reveal. The preliminary is this head doesn't look as bad, so maybe it's not as far gone. Next up, the cylinder really work at it to get this one started so it's kind of starting to seize I think and there it is the same problem I'm gonna check and make sure that the bearing on the crank is free okay so this isn't quite as bad as the first one they didn't try to take it as far so I'm gonna do the same thing with this other cylinder and clean it up a follow up here Obviously this piston is roasted. One thing that I'm really happy about is our wrist pin is free and our rod bearing is free. So my plan should work. My kit that I got comes with a base gasket, a new head gasket, and piston and rings. So this is going to work out just as I was hoping. Okay guys, got back from the Ozarks, had a good trip, got some work done. And I got back and I was a little bit restless, so I decided to put this piston on. I put the piston rings on in their proper order and I placed the wrist pin on there and I used some, some good assembly lube, Lucas assembly lube, there's the label and also used a little bit of oil to just lubricate that up and I'm going to put a little bit more on there just like on the dirt bikes, stuff some rags down in there to keep anything from getting in I don't think I'm going to put the cylinder on tonight but I might okay so here we are I've compressed the rings and slid the cylinder on to the piston and um, I got the cam chain and I got the little roller here that's in lieu of the cam chain guide and got it placed where it needed to be and I'm going to see if I'll just slide this thing on this is my first time doing this Okay, so I had my cam chain kind of slip out of there. I was kind of excited trying to get this on film. But I got it slipped on there into place. I got a little bit of excess oil. I want to clean up this uh, head gasket mating surface. But yeah, we're making some headway. Pretty excited about it. What do you guys think? It's been a while since I did a sponsorship. 
Only thing I can really come up with right now is a heater in my garage. So it's my sponsor today. I'm going to put this head gasket on here and put this head on the Grom. Okay, I've got the head on and the head gasket in place. I'm just going to slide it down into place. I'm not going to try to film this. Okay, I got my timing mark. I'm still at TDC. I slid this bad boy down on here. So I'm going to go ahead and get it secured and torqued down. And then we'll work on our timing, which I think I have it pretty close. Okay, so I've oiled these down. And I've used the Lucas assembly lube for this also. And I'm going to double check my manual and I think it says 27 foot-pounds. Okay, it turned out to be 18 foot-pounds. Yeah, that would be quite a bit for a number 12. So I got one to pop over here. So I'm going to go to here. And I'm my, I'm my own cameraman, so bear with me. There's that one. I'm going to go ahead and step back to this one. Almost. There's that. Okay, so I crisscrossed on this until they were torquing. They're hitting the torque of 18 foot pounds. So I hit them, and so they're solid. And I also torqued these down since they're a number eight. I torque them down to eight newton meters. So with the old school. So to get this cam in, I gotta pull off a little bit of tension off there little cheesy cam chain tensioner. Okay, so I have my timing mark here lining up. And my timing mark lining up with the mark on the head. I just gotta torque all this down. Okay, I went ahead and checked valve clearance last night when I had this on my table and got the oil can. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of juice since this whole system's been punished. All right, I'm working on the little Grom here. And last night I installed the throttle body and the exhaust. And what I also have done is I've taken the side case cover, or the Kitako uh, clutch cover, and I've got the oil pump here. And what we're gonna be putting in here is one of those that has the little copper straw on the back side that pulls the oil from the back of the case. I'm just waiting on it to get in here and a battery that should be in here later this afternoon. Then I'll reinstall all of this and then we'll fire it up. But first what I'm gonna do, and since I have the spark plug out of here, is I'm going to prime the system with oil after I prime the oil pump and install it so that everything's good and lubricated when we do our first fire. Okay, so I got the oil pump in place and I took my little oil can here and I primed it up and spun some into it until it was spun the cog on this actually until it was spitting some out of its place and I put it on its studs and I'm torquing it down to 5.2 newton meters there's that I'm my own cameraman here so bear with me That looks like 5.2. I got this really close before I started the video here. There we go. All right, we're gonna give it a try. Ready? <laughs> Derek, what do you think about that? That's badass. <laughs> 